Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the CS TV. I'm your host Kathleen Egal Tuto, Madam CS, and this is the makers of Kenya's violent history. Stay tuned and have it true and real. Did you know that there was a president in Kenya who ruled for only six hours? So in today's video, we take you back to history to look at the attempted military coup in Kenya in 19. 82. Who were the architects and how was this coup orchestrated? Stay tuned and let's have this discussion. The year is 1982. It is at the beginning of the year and the two Air Force officers, um, Senior Sergeant Pangris Otenyo and Lieutenant Combo, are having a discussion, a conversation at the Araikipia Airpiece. They are expressing their displeasure on how Moi runs the government. And Senior Sergeant Pangris Oteno, Oteno is actually contemplating to, over, to overthrow President Moi's government over what he, he terms as Moi's uh, government not being a good way of leadership. I do not know what actually was with the problem as far as Moi's government was concerned by then because because Moi was only three years into presidency after the death of Msecho Mokenyata in um, 1978. Um, so one could wonder honestly what had President Moi did because at this particular time, the, the Moi that we came to know a few years later, a dictator, had not actually expressed himself, Hall has not act accepted himself outwardly as a dictator but again we can look at this aspect of you know the desire to overthrow the government from what was happening around african countries at that particular time most of the military coups that happened in africa independent africa were between 1975 up to 1990 so i think these two um air force officers were like, you know, if it has happened in other countries, we can also overtake, all overthrow, and take over the government here in Kenya. So they have this conversation, but they don't reach a conclusion on what to do next. So Senior Sergeant Pangris Oteno has an assignment that he's supposed to do at the Moi Airport, Isli, in Nairobi. So he comes to Isli, Nairobi, he's supposed to do his assignment, and after he's done with his assignment, he passes by an office where he meets a young energetic man, senior private Hesakaya Ochuka. So in Ochakaya Ochuka's office, there's something that attracts his attention. The inscriptions or the writing in Hesakaya Ochuka's desk. This is what was written on that particular desk. I am the next president of Kenya. So senior private Hesakaya Ochuka was so much ambitious to become the president of Kenya to an extent that he had written this dream on his work desk. So, in his office. And I want you to understand this. For those who understand military ranks, the se senior private position is the second least position in terms of rank ranking the army, in the, the, the personnel in the army. So this is a very... A very, at least senior person who is actually contemplating that in few years that he is going to be the next president of Kenya. So immediately, senior sergeant Pankras Otienyo sees this. The conversation that he was having with Lieutenant Combo comes into his mind and is like, I think this guy is the right person to add into the conversation that we had with my colleague, Lieutenant Combo. So... Uh, immediately, it signs that Esekai Ochuka could be a nice partner in their plan to overthrow the government. And as a result, it decides to engage him. So he engages him, they exchange contact, and they're like, you know, guy, uh, once I reach in Laikipia, we will have a conversation about this. And for now, let's keep it here. I will keep you updated. So truly, Esekai Ochuka is into this game. He's ready, you know, and, you know, they agree. So back in Laikipia, se uh, Senior Sergeant uh, Pangris informs Lieutenant Combo that, you know what, I have found another guy who shares same ideas as we, as we are. So um, 
I have engaged him in this discussion about overthrowing the government and he's into the game. So the three kicks off discussions on actually how they are going to take over the government. And immediately they form a, a political party called the People's Redemption Pat yeah, Council. So the, the People's Redemption Council is the political party that senior sergeant Esekaya Hochuka was going to use to lead as the president of Kenya after taking over the government through a military coup. So the planning begins and they decide to make, you know, their planning operations from Omochawan Estate in Nairobi. So they start, you know, we what are we who do we need? How do we need them when and where? So after like three to four months of, of, of planning, they realized that something was not adding up. Some of the information that they could discuss in their planning meetings could be leaked outside. You know, they could say something and then they could hear rumors about it among other colleagues who were not actually part of the team. So they felt like there was a mall or there were people spying on them from within this group that was organizing for the military coup. So with fears of treason, Esekaya Ochuka uh, took over the entire planning and informed Pankris uh, and uh, Kombo that going forward, it was, the, it was going to be the only person who was responsible for recruitment of members to this group that was going to overthrow the government. So what does he do? Senior Private Esakaya Hochuka lives in Nairobi and he went and camped in Nakuru town. At that particular time, it was Nakuru town. Today, it is Nakuru city. So Nakuru town was very, very strategic to him because of two reasons. One, that was another state house for the president of Kenya. Remember, Kenya had three places where the, the status was situated. Nairobi, Nakuru, and Mombasa. So that's one thing. Number two, Nakuru town was strategically positioned in terms of assessing other uh, barracks that is Ranets, Girigiri, Nanyuki and Laikipia. So he could easily reach out to colleagues from these barracks and barracks and actually recruit them into his team to overthrow the government. So his criteria is uh, recruitment Places were actually in bars. So he could invite his colleague to a bar when he could see like somebody he could trust, invite you to a bar, buys you a drink. Then once uh, you talk over this idea, he sells the idea to you. If you are in, he will take you up to the lodging and do what? And make you take an oath that one, you would be in that team until the mission is accomplished. Do two, you will not actually uh, lyrics information or leak out information to anybody who was not supposed to know. So you understand, I've always said that in gangs, militias, repo groups, terrorist groups, there's a lot of all thing that is meant, number one, to put people together till the mission is accomplished. And number two, to ensure that nobody leaks this information outside the group. So that's what he was doing. So within a short period of time, uh, uh, senior private Sekaya Ochuka had actually recruited enough people that he felt actually these people were now okay or was a good number to do what? To do the operation. And the operation, remember, here is to overthrow President Moi's government. And therefore, he was set to go back to Nairobi and also informed his, inform his friends, that is, um, Senior Sachet Pangri Sotenyo and Rutinet Combo, that you know what, guys? We have the team and it is about to go down. We are ready to go. But before he left to Nairobi, he passed through Theranet Parlax in Nakuru. At Theranet Parlax in Nakuru, there was something that was of interest to him and that was very important for the execution of the military coup. The 81 tank battalion in the Theranet Barracks. So he needed this battalion to control state house on today when actually they could take over the government. So he really needed this battalion so badly to make sure, sure that State House Nakuru was well grounded and well taken care of when they are taking offer in Nairobi. So 
Back in Nairobi, what happened? Uh, they did the investigations and they realized that actually um, on the 3rd of August 1982, President Daniel Arab Moi was going to chair the Organization of African Unity Summit in Tripoli in Libya. Now, wait. The current African Union that we know those times it was called the organization of african unity and on the 3rd of august 1982 there was supposed to be a summit and this summit was to be held in libya tripoli where president moi was going to be the one chairing this summit so these guys are like wow good time muse will not be there so we will just take over the government by the time he comes back he's no longer the president so they decided you know what the d day is on 3rd august 1982. so however while they were planning all this and they have their different set of dates remember from the earlier meetings and plannings at umojawani estate in nairobi they had realized that people were leaking out their secrets to the government truly you know even with this recruitment he was doing there was chances that some information some officers could you know share with others and eventually this information could reach somewhere so finally their plan to overthrow the government reached the the special branch department so the special branch department again uh was like the current national intelligence service that was the department that was entrusted and mandated with the intelligence activities and anything of the country that had to do with intelligence so the plan by senior sergeant uh otenyo uh, senior private esekaya ochuka and Lieutenant Combo has reached the intelligence office, the special branch department that they want to overthrow the government. And this information actually landed on the office of an intelligence officer called Joseph Kiburu. Joseph Kiburu was normally nicknamed Pat, P U T. So, Pat is one man who is very famous but mysterious and also you know people fear him. When you read about the history of violent groups between 1980s to 1990s there, you will find um, Pat appearing so much when it comes to hunting town, down gangs and criminals in the country. So when this information reaches to Pat, Pat reports to his boss, who was the 10 head of the special branch, James Kanyoto. Pat is like, boss. We have three individuals here who have formed a gang that they want to overthrow the government. That is the hottest intelligence information I'm receiving. So Kanyoto, being the head of the special branch or the head of intelligence, orders Bart to travel with a team of other soldiers to the Air Force headquarters in Raikipia, Airpiece, and ensure that they have come back with the people planning the coup for arrest and imprisonment hmm. however when pat arrives and the team arrives at the laikipia airpiece <laughs> things they did not go as they thought the head of the air force sends them away unceremoniously with the threats so they don't end up coming with any culprit so they come back disappointed and when Kanyoto gets this disappointing report that actually, you know, the Air Force head in Laikipia has not accepted interrogation and, you know, arrest of culprits who are about, who are planning to overthrow the government, he decides to call uh, Mr. President, you know, Daniel to teach Arab Moy. You know what him say? News reaching us on our desk is that there is an impending um, impending military coup your government is about to overthrown by section of air force so what do we do 
and this is happening on the 3rd first of July 1982. By this time, uh, Senior Sergeant uh, Otenyo and uh, Lieutenant Combo, together with Esekaya Huchuka, they had known that their plan had leaked to the special branch. And therefore, they have a, an emergency meeting. What do we do? So they decide to change the, the date of overthrow from that of August to 1st of August. Remember, they are making these changes on the 31st of July 1982. Coincidentally, remember the meeting that President Moi was supposed to chair at Tripoli, Libya. The summit is cancelled because there was no enough quorum to guarantee the Organization of African Unity Summit. So because there was no enough people confirming to come for the meeting, it was cancelled and therefore that one meant President Moi is not moving outside the country. And these guys are like, anyway, President Moi is even not traveling. So why we had put this thing on third is because we knew that he could not be inside the country. But now that he's not traveling, we can even do it right now. So they said, tonight, the 1st of August 1982, it is going down. So according to their plan, these guys were like, first, they paralyze all the communication equipment in the country, such that there would be no communication, you know, from one barrack or from one police unit to another. And how do they do this? They had planned to destroy the telecommunication equipment at the Embakazi barracks. Number two, they had planned that after the Embakazi barracks, they would head to the Voice of Kenya. Now, there again, I have to say something. The Voice of Kenya, VOK, is actually what we call now KPC, the Kenya Broadcast Corporation channel. So at that particular time, it was known the Voice of Kenya, and it was the only actually... Um, a media network that used to give information and news to to the general public so they are like we must go to the voice of kenya and declare ourselves as uh, the new government they had also um instructed one of their colleague corporal cheramani to commandeer two five f5 fighter jets to pump one State House Nairobi, and two, uh, GSU headquarters at the Ruaka um, station. So they had everything set. And they knew that once these things are done, you know, they are able to take care of the government. And they remember in Inakuru, the 81 tanks battalion will take care of everything. Now, on the midnight of 1st of August 1982, Embakazi was Embakaz barracks was actually attacked, the telecommunication equipment destroyed, and everything was in motion as planned. At the voice of Kenya, one person was of interest to the theme of senior private Esekaya Uchuka. So they really wanted one person there. And this person was the then recently journalist Leonard. Mambo Botella. Many of us knows Mambo Botella from his program Che Huo Ni Na Kweli. But if you are taken back to those days, that was a renowned uh, VOK journalist. So what do they do? How do they get um, Leonard Mambo Botella? Because it's at night. At 4 a.m. they I check the VOK bus driver one Mr. Wainaina. So it is Mr. Wainaina who takes them to where Leonard Mambotela was living then at Ingara, Nairobi. So they go there. They use Wainaina to call uh, Leonard Mambotela. And then Leonard wakes up. And then when he comes out, he finds these heavily gunned men, you know, and is ordered the police land cruiser that they came with 
and driven up to the Voice of Kenya headquarters where he is supposed to help them make the announcement as the journalist that Kenya knew, Kenyans knew that actually the government had been overthrown. So at the station, that is at the Fee OK station, Leonard Mambo Mbotela comes face to face with heavy armed Esekaya Ochuka. And Esekaya Ochuka has no problem with Leonard Mambo Teller at all. He scripts something down and he gives Leonard Mambo Mbotela to read. That was the work that Mambo Mbotela was supposed to do. So this is what he tells Mambo Mbotela to announce. Hamjambo wananchi mimi ni Leonard Mambo Mbotela hii ni sauti ya Kenya na wafahamisha kwamba serikali ya mzee Daniel Arap Moi imepinduliwa na hapa nilipo ni kuna bwana Isakaya Ochuka na viongozi wengine kwa hivyo anasema ya kwamba tulie majumbani kila mtu akae majumbani mahabusu wote wafunguliwe na polisi ni raia polisi wote ni raia wananchi msitange tange tulieni tu nyumbani Good morning my fellow Kenyans I am Leonard Mambo Mbotera and I am uh, reporting to you from the voice of Kenya this is to inform you that the government is now under the control of the military under the commandership of senior private Hesekaya Ochuka all police officers are now common citizens all prisoners should be released and every person is hereby informed to remain indoors in their homes until further communication. So once that one was done, Leonard Mambo Mbotera is, you know, put down below those tables and, you know, and these people are here guarding also the voice of Kenya, etc., it is important to note one thing. Remember the 31st of July when Kanyoto, the head of special branch, told President Moi that there is an impending blot to overthrow your government. Moi had told him, ah, forget about, they don't worry about anything. Today is on a weekend. We will actually... Um, solve this or we will actually handle this on monday the 2nd of august 1982 so you know moi took it so simple he didn't see the magnitude of what kanyoto was actually telling him so on this 1st of august when now the announcement has been made from vok that senior private Esekaya Uchuka is now the one controlling the government. Moi had woken up in the morning as normal. He was called an early riser because he used to wake up somewhere around 5. So, and the announcement has been made and he has all this story. He was at Nakuru State House and the old man now is going mad. You know, what's happening? Yeah. Who is overthrowing my government? You know, etc. So what does he do? President Mo Moi calls a crisis meeting with his top security personnel in State House, Nakuru. Truly they come. But within this discussion, President Moi wanted and was so determined to leave State House, Nakuru, on his Mercedes, the presidential Mercedes, you know, car. We normally see the presidents um, moving with to Nairobi. And then the security office is like, no, you cannot do that. Uh, these men, if they have overthrown the government, they can do anything to you. Your Mercedes Benz will get bullets and you just die. So they convince President Moy to wait for the armored personnel carrier, APC, which could then be more safe for this kind of journey. The armored personnel cars are these vehicles that are um, peeled in a way that they are very bullet proof and no bullet can go through at all. And therefore the people, its occupants are all, you know, very very uh safe so as they are waiting to see how they get the apc that is the armored personnel carrier there's one person in this security meeting who is not talking so much he is the escort commander of president moi his name was elicha sambeyo 
it is just ambiguous it's like wait you guys why am i not getting this thing coming out correctly from what i know is that the army is supposed to be somewhere today doing um involved in army sports weekend so who are these people who are not in Rodua for the armed sports weekend of attacking the government? So these people are like, ah, it may be a small section of the army. So we are not dealing with the entire army. It may be few individuals with the army because truly some people, you know, are at the are at Rodua for some weekend sports days for the army. So Sambeyo, that is Elijah Sambeyo, has his brother, uh, Mecha Rasaro Sambeyo, who is situated at Girigiri Nakuru. And therefore he calls his brother, and the brother confirms that actually that the entire army cannot be involved in this because it is supposed to be in Rodwa for some sports. So this must be a small section of the hair force. So Mecha Rasaro's advice is Moi that he should not be allowed to leave Nakuru on a Rand Cruiser or a Mercedes Benz. And then the same same Mecharasaras called Pridegiam Somba, the 10 Girgir Parax boss who provided them with the armored personnel carrier that was to be used by President Moi and his team to Nairobi uh, State House. Now, by this particular time, guys, uh, a report had reached the deputy chief of general staff, Mohamud Mohamadi, that the Ochuka team was where? At the Voice of Kenya. So Mohamud Mohamad rushes to Kahawa Galson or Kahawa Barracks and assembled a rapid response team and directs them to, you know, to fly, you know, and up to the voice of Kenya and contain the situation. Ochuka's team at the VOK on realizing that there is a team of officers that has been sent to, you know, to couple them and to, to stop what they were doing from, uh, from the Kahawa Galsons, they managed to run away. But not all of them ran away. Uh, some some of Ochuka's team members were killed in the struggle because the police, the, the, the team of armed men from, uh, from the Kahawa Galson reached there very fast. And as Ochuka and the team runs to Moi Air Base in Isri where they anticipate to get more pack up, more resources, some were involved in this fracas and, and died. So, um, Muhammad is team, Muhammad and his team from the Kawa Galson make, makes their way to the fee okay. And I will tell you what they do at the fee okay. But before I tell you that, let's follow this man Ochuka who has left the fee okay and gone to the Moi Air Base in Isli. So as he leaves the voice of Kenya, private senior uh, sergeant, uh, senior um the senior private uh, the senior private Esekai Ochuka is so sure, sure you know first there's no communication that can be done from the from the telecommunications equipment in Embakazi. number two he's already been declared the president so but he didn't know one thing that Corporal Cheremani did not do his assignment remember Corporal Cheremani was supposed to commandeer the 5F fighter jets to pump state house and pump like Ipia, uh, and pump uh, the GSU barracks in Ruaka. What happened? Why did this uh, mission of pumping state house and GSU not work? Hmm. Now, when Corporal Cheremani was given this task, he went and picked one pirate called Mecha David Mtua. So it is Mecha David Mtua who is supposed to fly the 5F uh, fighter jets to pump state house and GSU. 
David Mtua is not in support of this coup. So what does he do? He knows that if he flies at 5 Gs and 6 Gs, <laughs> Mecha, uh, Corporal Cheremani will just, you know, lose conscious up there and he can just do whatever he wants as the Bayreuth. So what does he do? He fries the jet at 5 Gs. And then instead of forming State House Nairobi, he pumps Mount Kenya and then moves a few meters ahead and pumps again. So he doesn't drop the pumps where they are supposed to do what? To be dropped. He, he lands the, the aircraft at Raikipia Airbase and goes back to his normal duty. Now, back in Nairobi, when Esekai Ochuka and the team have run away to Isri Airbase, there's a group of students from the University of Nairobi who do, who do not like Moi. And again, I cannot say why these people never liked President Moi. So they start chanting anti-Moi slogans, very happy in the streets that actually, finally, Moi has gotten out of power. And they didn't know that by this time that they are getting the information, the news that, you know, Esekai Ochuka is now the president. The theme from Kahawa Galson has actually taken also control over the VOK and some of these team members are in the streets of Nairobi. And therefore these people were pitted. These students were given a pitting. And on that particular morning, 300 people died. 200 were University of Nairobi students and 100 were team members of private senior uh, Hesekaya Ochuka. So, again, in Isri Airpiece, Hesekaya Ochuka is like, now I need to know what is happening in Inakuru. You know, now he's been declared the president. But he knows very well that there's a team following him, the team by Muhammad Hamad, the one that came from Ga uh, Galson, Kahawa Galsons. So he wants to know whether actually the 81 Thanks Battalion in Inakuru is under control of State House. So when he inquires, he realized that, that actually these people sort changed him. They did not do as agreed. So he realized that in Inakuru, nothing has happened. State House still remains the State House of the President. The 81 Tank Battalion never even left the 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 barracks so and on the other side by this particular time remember president moi was waiting for the armored personnel carrier it has come and president moi and his team are on the way coming to nairobi they are on their way to state house nairobi so back in the studio uh, Chen, uh mahamud hamad um finds uh Leonard Mambo Mbotera, still uh, under the tables. And he doesn't have a problem with Leonard Mambo Mbotera. He tells Ma Leonard Mambo Mbotera to make the following announcement. Good morning, fellow Kenyans. I am uh, Leonard Mambo Mutera again coming from uh, the fee okay and I am here to tell you that the government is still under the leadership of President Daniel Troitich Arab Moy. Everything is under control. Remain in your homes and you will get further communication. So he finishes. So at this particular time, uh, Esekaya Ochuka realized that actually he was alone and he could not make it as planned. The people that they had trusted, you know, the one who was supposed, Corporal Sheremani, who was supposed to ensure that State House Nairobi is pumped, GSU Barracks is pumped, 
the 81 tanks battalion that was supposed to ensure that Nakuru is you know under control those people have not done as agreed so senior private um Esekai Ochuka together with his colleague Lieutenant Combo and senior sergeant um Pangris Otenyo commanded an aircraft and they decided to run away to Tanzania leaving president Moi to comfortably continue reading his government so that was how that morning ended you know and by this particular time this coup took only six hours so the private senior Esekaya Ochuka was able to be a president you know for six hours but within anarchy and chaos people dying etc so three years later uh in july 1985 esekai ochuka uh pangris otenyo uh lieutenant combo and uh nine others were hunted down in tanzania arrested brought back to the country charged and found guilty of treason and on 10th July 1985, the 12 were the last people to be hanged under the Kenyan government. And that is how the attempted military coup in Kenya happened. You know, drawing actors from different military and security agencies in the country. It is important to note that this attempted military coup would make President Moi shift his leadership, behavior, and style to dictatorship. To an extent that he declared Kenya a single party state. And from there, going forward, the opposition in the country really was suppressed, intimidated, and received a lot of violence from state sponsored gangs such as the uh, can youth wingers and mzee moi could lead up to 2002 when actually he retired so that was the military uh, attempted military coup in kenya 1992 1982 kindly subscribe like share and comment on this video we meet next time for another wonderful wonderful documentary in the makers of kenya's violent history